In the next five minutes, you're going to become deliberately creative. I'm going to give you some tools to help you to do that. And to do that, you need to defer judgment when you're generating ideas. You need to strive for lots of ideas, force connections between things that usually don't relate to each other, and change the way that you view failure. Let's talk about each one of those. How do you generate lots of ideas? You follow some guidelines. First guideline is deferred judgment. Next guideline is to strive for quantity. Third guideline is to seek wild and unusual ideas. And the fourth guideline is to combine and build on other ideas. Let me talk with you about each one of those. Deferring judgment. First off, when we talk about deferring judgment and when we talk about an idea, an idea is just an idea. That's all it is. It's not an action. It's not a decision. It's not a conclusion. So judge your ideas after you've generated them, not while you're generating. Separate the generation of ideas from their evaluation. Next thing, come up with lots of ideas, and we find it helpful to set an idea quote of about 30 ideas. What you'll find when you generate ideas, the first third, the first 10 or so, those are the usual ideas. The second third are the, kind of the unusual and the silly ideas, and then the pay dirt comes when you get about 30 ideas or more. That's where the new innovations begin to happen. Make connections. Stephen King said, uh, good story ideas seem to come quite, quite literally from nowhere. Two previously unrelated ideas come together to make something new under the sun, and we're going to do that right now. So we're going to make an improvement on a product, and the product is something you're all very familiar with, a suitcase. So I need you to hear from you. How might you improve a suitcase with all the ideas you have for improving a suitcase? What do we got? Very good. What else? Good. What else? Wonderful. What else? Excellent. What else? Excellent. Good. What else? Now, we're going to help you out. Let's try forcing the connection between improving a suitcase and an elephant. What ideas you got for improving a suitcase from an elephant? What do we got? Make it stronger. Good. Large. Good. What else? Make it flappy. Good. What else? Built-in water bottle, excellent, what else? Here's some ideas, and you had some. Make it bigger, make a flexible handle like an elephant's trunk, put flaps on the side like an elephant's flappy, floppy ears, right, good? And put straps on it so it can be carried by an elephant. I got a few more for you. Next one, what ideas do you get for improving a suitcase from a telephone? What do we got? Built-in phone, good, what else? Auto dialer. Auto dialer, good, what else? Combo lock. A combo lock, good, what else? A wireless, a wireless suitcase, fabulous. Good, what else? Pay for what you use in the suitcase. Good, what else? All right, what ideas might you get for improving a suitcase from a bowl of fruit? Talk to me about that. What's that? Wine, absolutely good. What else? Soft and squishy. Good, what else? A refrigerator. Good, what else? A biodegradable suitcase. Okay, last one. What ideas do you get for improving a suitcase from a sports car? What do we got? A beautiful suitcase. What else? What's that? Yeah, because motorized wheels, yeah, wheels, motorized, okay. Here's an idea that's out there on the market, even right now, a scooter suitcase. Ooh, get that the next time you're going around the airport, people. Zoom, there you go, okay, the scooter suitcase. Okay, we have a couple more things to talk about. One is to talk about failure and learning. So one of the last things I want to talk about today is to change the way that you view failure, because failure equals learning. Whatever, whenever you do anything, you produce a result. Now, it might not be the result that you anticipated, but the question is, what can you learn from that result? What can you learn from that result? One of the great quotes on this is from Edison. And Edison said, I've not failed 700 times when trying to invent the light bulb. I've succeeded in proving that those 700 ways will not work. When I've eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. <laughs> what a great attitude, right? Now we're going to play a little game called, play, like, called Name the Inventor. So, who invented the Voyager aircraft that went around the world on one tank of gas? Also, who invented Spaceship One, the first privately funded manned flight to go into space? Who invented it? Crickets, I hear. I hear crickets, right? Well, I'm going to give you another hint, okay? Who invented or who is the founder of scaled composites? Now, the graphite composite materials that these the air aircraft are made of are now the primary material now used in with most uh, commercial aircraft. Graphite composite materials are stronger than aluminum and weigh half as much. The inventor is Bert Rattan. All right, and here's what Bert Rattan has to say about failure. He says, I've got to develop nine prototypes that go nowhere to make one that goes to production for big money. Only the place that tolerates failure gives rise to the thinking that results in success. So. Change your thinking. You know that expression, trial and error? Let's change your thinking from trial and error to trial and learn. So the next time you're out there, trial and error to trial and learn. You're creating a result. Okay, so here's the four things you need to do to get more creative. You can do this tomorrow, all right? Defer judgment when generating ideas. Generate lots of ideas for solving a problem. Force connections between things that usually don't really relate, just like the suitcase and all those items, and change the way you'd view failure. Now, um, in this picture, I'm between those cattle and the food. 
and I'm now between you and the bar. So thank you very much, and good evening. Thank you.